Hey, welcome back to Tactics Talk with Guido. On this episode, I've got another replay analysis for you with LP Bronco. He's in his tier 6 T34 85M, which is a premium medium tier 6 Russian tank. One of the best tier 6 tanks in the entire game with an insane DPM. Buffed well and above any of the other T34 85 variants for some bizarre reason. But it is, and it is a good premium tank. If you have a chance to pick one up, I would. I usually don't talk about whether you want to pick up a tank or not, but this one is actually that good. Read OP. Anyway, he is headed over here in Karelia. Sorry, Erlenberg. He's not in Karelia. He's on Erlenberg, and he's gone to the east side, which is not a side I go to very much, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. But we're going to watch somebody work this side pretty good. So what are the advantages of this side? Well, if you can get up like they did, and the Chaffee proves there's nobody over there on their side, then you can really start flanking them and working foolish people in the middle. Or if you have two of their tier sevens camping at the cap, <laughs> you can start you can start punishing them punishing them as they do it. Alright, these two guys are out of the game. They are completely and utterly out of the game. There's not a big push coming from the east side and there typically isn't. There's usually a lot of camping on the hill like we're seeing right here with LP and the guys that are with him. So if you are a red guy on the other side and you think that camping in the cap is a good idea, I would really like to disabuse you of that idea. Unless you're against me. So if you're against me, please take your two two of your top tier sevens and camp the cap. That would be fantastic. Keep on doing that. But anyway, LP is working in the middle. And like I said, one of the advantages of this spot is you can work over any foolish people trying to go up the middle. You got a bishop, you got a BDR G1B. As you can see though, he actually didn't really get any very good shots in there. And that is the problem with this spot. So many of the of the buildings down there provide cover and a lot of the shots will end up being fleeting. You're shooting through a little crevice. You spot a guy, you don't spot a guy. There's a panther by the way, LP, I think you missed that, but you could actually have several shots on him right there. Just zoom in, shoot him man, shoot that. <laughs> what are you doing, shoot the panther. <laughs> Just a missed opportunity there. And you can see that the fight is developing over on the west side. And I would contend that the west side is actually the best place. That's where I would have gone if I had this tank in this battle. But there you go. And the bishop gets ammo racked and bye bye. That's the first of two ammo racks LP is going to do. So positioning wise, I don't really agree with it. But we're here, aren't we? And how do we work it? Well, we're working it pretty good so far. We've got a couple shots in there. But we haven't done a lot of damage early on. And LP is going to end up with a pretty good game. But look at the game, go how it's going. They've basically got this one and it's clean up on aisle two. And would you say that, LP, at this point, that you had a whole lot to do with winning the game up to this point? And I think if you're honest, you would say, well, probably not. Uh, this Panther is just terrible. He's got that needle gun, and I don't know if he's got a bad crew or an ammo rack or something, but he, and maybe he's shooting the guy behind you, but he just does not seem to be spitting out the shots. I agree with this. Push on down here and get behind this little building. Protect yourself. Now you can pretty much no respect this clown. This guy's all about. No, it wasn't a bounce. Maybe he missed you. I'm not sure. He must be playing on a 386DX or something. Maybe his brain is a 386DX. Anyway. We're going to come over here. LP's going to do a nice job here shooting into the position where most tanks have an ammo rack, which is usually on the side of the hole right below the turret. See him come in here and he just starts to shoot right into the very middle, right kind of below the turret. That's where the gunner will just be pulling shells off the rack on the side of the armor, and he puts two in kind of the same spot, and the third one trips the ammo rack and blow it blowed it up. And now we're going to come over here and start working on these guys, the E25. LP had to kill him first. I think he's probably the more dangerous of the tanks over here. Plus he was a one-shot kill. Just take him down. That's one gun out, and then you can start working on this doofus who's firing HE out of his 3485. Who's going to learn why it is that an HE gun is not so great sometimes, because he's going to hit that wall and explode his HE round, and then he dies right there. So 1,988 gets about 2,000. I think there's a shot in there that I'm... Must have been a blind shot or something that actually hit, because I think he's over 2,000 damage on that, and they end up winning. So going back to the beginning, as far as the initial positioning, I would have definitely gone over to the west side, but that's just me. I just think that that's a more important side on this map. However, you didn't go there, and you did work the east side pretty good. But I would say a lot of it had to do with their two Tier 7s camping over there. And those Tier 7s, had they gone over to the west side, think about that for just a minute. 
The two tier sevens are over there fighting what you had left, the experimental, the TOG 2, the FV, and that E25. I bet you they beat that west side pretty handily, and now you're dealing with two tier sevens who are still in pretty good shape. Now, that's all speculation. That's not what happened. What happened was you reacted pretty well. I did like that you came off the hill. Once you noticed that the way the game was going and it was a cleanup time, you came off the hill, got aggressive, pushed into those two tier sevens and ate, them, ate their lunch, which is as it should be if you're going to be sitting back there like that as top tier. So be careful about taking away any lessons of, hey, this is a great idea to go over to the east on this map. Uh, let's say that if you were going to go over that side, then a middle or lower tier medium is not a bad choice to go over on that side with. You do want to avoid them rolling straight down the east column and coming in behind you or getting on the cap and all that kind of stuff. But that just wasn't a factor in this game. Nice job with the game overall, though, man. Hope you guys like what you saw. Hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and we will see you.